Oh, okay, northwest of Dubbo. That's interesting. That's out near the Darling somewhere. Oh, no, not that far out. It's, it's not far away from Dubbo. It's a back way. You see, I'm, I'm an ex-interstate truck driver. We used to... There's a road that cuts down around to... Um, oh, God, the name is Gateson. I was only looking at it again this morning on the, um, Google Maps. But, yeah, it, it's a back way that cuts around to um, West Wylong to avoid going through Dubbo and... Oh, okay. I was only up through all that country last year, in about May last year, actually. I've been right up through there. Well, I've actually, um, at the time, this is how convinced I was, as soon as I could pull the truck over, I was like, at the time, I was trying to pull over to get a photo of it, but it was real wet at that time. This was autumn 2020. Okay. That area there received some rain and it was quite wet, so I couldn't pull off the road and I was in B double. So I got perfect sight-on vision of it. I, it threw me at first because what, what happened was I was driving northbound, like heading towards Gilgandra. Yep. And um, as I'm coming coming up, it, this is south of Fairfield itself, the little village. Tell me, oh, I couldn't be that far away from the village. I can pay at that. But I've, I've, I've actually pinpointed on Google Maps where it happened. Oh, excellent. And you can send me that. Uh, yeah, yeah I, that's how convinced I was. As soon as I could pull over, I... Google mapped where I was, found the dam that had run off, and, and put a pin drop on it immediately, because I, I knew what I was looking at. That's um, fantastic. What what shocked me about it was, what drew my attention in the first place, I was just cruising along, I looked over on the right side, and where this dam was, about 300 metres away, the sheep were mobbing up together on a fence line. I thought that was strange, because straight away I thought, well, normally sheep are grazing in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's spooking them? Yeah, what's spooking them? So I'm, I'm looking expecting to see a dingo or something. And the next minute, this creature's run off the dam and like the higher grass and foliage around the dam and it's run off the dam. But he was making a beeline for the sheep. And what what struck me at first was he was like a rusty, like a fox colour. He was rusty red like a fox. Yep. But his end was black. And at first I thought, it's just the fox and it's probably got bogged in the dam or something got you know mud on his back then i realized no that's black stripe that's not mud <laughs> awesome and, then, and when and when he was running at first I, when i first thought it was a fox i thought he must have had a fur on his foot like because the way of the way they run so because it, it ran like, peculiar <laughs> I, and then i realized no the head's too long to be a fox he's too big like, he's a decent-sized animal. He wasn't huge, but he would have been, I don't know, hard to say, like, you know, be easier now. But I'd, I'd say he would have been about the size of a kelpie, maybe a bit bigger, like average-sized kelpie. Yep. And, um, yeah, he didn't even notice the truck, took no attention to the truck, and he was, I doubt he was running flat out. It's more like a, a, a steady gallop. But he had his head down, and he was beeline for that mob of sheep. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. Holy crap, what is this? <laughs> you know, like, I, I straight away, as soon as I got a phone reception, rung another mate of mine, he's an interstate truck driver for decades too, and I, I told him what I saw, and he said, you, you reckon it was one? I said, it was 200 metres off the road in broad daylight. <laughs> like, uh, you know, where he was, where I got to see him run, the grass was quite short. Yep. This was when they were still coming out of the drought, like, you know, like there's a lot of green pick around, but there, there wasn't, um, you know, like knee high or higher grass in the area where he was running. It was quite low, so I got a really good look at it. And and of course, I'm an ex roo shooter, so I know a kangaroo tail when I see one. And he has really like, like a kangaroo tail. Yeah, Chris, yeah, have have you got a fan on or something there? Uh, no, here. Wait a minute. I'll... Is that better? I just took that, it off the... That's, ear, that's ear he, <laughs> heaps better. Yeah, sorry. I was, I was, I was just looking at YouTube when you run. Um, but, yeah, I, like, I've driven trucks, like, across to Adelaide a lot through the deserts and that and, and up and down the East Coast everywhere. And, yeah, it just blew me away that I would see one there. Like, and also, at first, I wasn't even sure if it was a thylacine because I didn't know that they come in other colours. I'd only ever seen the same generic, you know, that 
tan colour that everyone talks about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't, I didn't know until I started watching your channel that they actually come in other colours. Yeah, yes. they do. They they come in like um, we had a look at some in the Adelaide Museum years ago, five six years ago, and they got some pelts out of the drawer. And there was a grey one in there, which was a female, and then there was a rusty red one, like you're talking about, which was a male. Yeah, well, he, he wasn't quite the same colour as a fox, but very similar. But, yeah, it was like a, a paler fox colour, I suppose. Yeah, it was like a rusty red, like... Yeah, like a dark brown with tinges of red in it. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, almost a... a like some of the bears you see in North America, like they they got like a reddish tinge to the the brown, like it was sort of like that. Yep. But um, yeah, the, the thing that struck me at first was the fact that it had sticking out straight tail. Then you know it's like a fox tail's bushy, and it wasn't. It was like a root tail. Yep. And uh, um, the black on the back. That's why for a second I thought, oh, it's just you know just been a fox in the dam and he's had a swim and got mud on him, you know, and then I realised, well, he's got something wrong with him. He's not running right. <laughs> and that's when I, I I just stared at it. I slowed the truck right down. I was doing probably, I was only doing about 80 because it's like some dog legs through that area, 85, 90 K. I was trying to build speed back up. And when, when I, when I seen it, I actually slowed right down. I was trying to get the phone out, trying, but by the time I got the phone out and nearly come to a stop on the bitumen, he was that far away. It was wasn't you know, worth it. Yep, would have been a speck. <laughs> so <laughs> when the closest you got to him, how close was that? Well, when I see you the picture, you'll see the dam. The dam is like right beside the road, like the boundary fence is, you know, I'd say twenty meters off the road. Be the boundary fence. The dam's right there, and he come off the back of the dam on an angle towards these sheep. So he would have been, uh, at worst, 150 metres away at, 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 at most when I first spotted him. Yep. And like I said, he was in the open, like the grass was very short where he was. So I got full view of it side on and that's what, took me like i literally took the foot off the accelerator and started slowing down immediately because i'm trying to get a good gander at this before it gets away because i'm like that ain't a fox and it ain't a dingo yeah <laughs> right uh, if i didn't see the black on its back i probably wouldn't have looked back at it again thinking it was just a fox but when i realized he was red like that rusty red with the black that's what made me take a second look and then, yeah, look at the tail. The tail ain't right. He's not running right. Like, I thought maybe it's got something wrong with the leg or something, like an injury. And then, yeah, the more I stared at it, the more I realised his head looks huge <laughs> and he doesn't look like any fox I've ever seen before and I've seen a lot of foxes <laughs> yeah. over how, the years. How long have you been an interstate driver for? Oh, I've done it for three years in a state, and um, now I'm back as a local driver. I run road trains from Toowoomba to Brisbane every day because I live in Toowoomba. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, and um, at that time, yeah, I was running down to Sydney, Melbourne, and, like, you know, people say, oh, you've mistaken it for something. Well, originally I come from Western Queensland, and I grew up my entire life offside and uncles that were hunters, roo shooters, pig hunting, you name it, we did it. Like, yep. And you, you get to see a lot of foxes <laughs> doing that sort of stuff and dingoes. And, yeah, I've seen a lot of dingoes in a state truck driving over the years, and you know it's a dingo the second you see it. You can't you Well, can't they got mistake. that they got that curve in the tail. Yeah, well, it's just the way it was running, like, and I'll tell you what really made me want to call you was when I seen that footage of the lady in um, Western Australia that had that one, how he was galloping across the paddock that she got on the camcord. Oh, that was Western Victoria. Yep, yep. Oh, was that Western Victoria? I thought it was Western Australia. Yeah. Um, well, the second I seen that footage, that's exactly how he's running, just slightly quicker. Yeah. But, they they have a bit of a skip about the back feet while they're running with the front feet. It's like they're hopping at yeah. the back almost. Well, it, 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 like, because I've had a lot of dogs in my life being a hunter and that, and, yeah, it, it reminds me of when your dog gets a burr in its back foot and <laughs> it starts doing that skip and run and almost carrying the back foot type thing. Like a limp. Yeah, like a limp nearly, yeah, and that's the way it was running and I, I just couldn't believe it. And then looking on Google Maps, I realised the area I was in, especially on the northern side of the highway, 
going back up into there, there's a lot of knobby hills and like forestry areas that are cleared. So there is a lot of habitat there for it to live in. So this is south of Gilgandra, yeah? Yeah. Um, oh, I should be able to... Oh, I might have to save your number first to do it. But yeah, um, Fairfield is like... Yeah, it's Fairfield Road was the road I was on. Yep. And yeah, that cuts you... Like you come down to past Gilgandra... And then I think it's 40 k's north of Dubbo. There's a road there. takes you around through uh, Nemoy and oh, what's the name of that other place? That bloody escapes me now. I was only looking at it before. I'm, oh, yeah. I've been um, right up through that country many times as a lad because my old man used to be an interstate truck driver as well. Yeah, yeah, T- Tullamore. It's just southwest of Tullamore. Okay. Yeah, on the Fairfield Road. Yep. That's that's where I seen him. And when you look on Google Maps, there's like a, um, just after Fairfield going south, there's a couple of big dog legs with some big straights. And it's on one of them straights that this dam is. And that's where I seen him. Yeah. And I was, I was quite quite taken back by it, actually, because, you know, it was broad daylight. Like, this would have been around lunchtime. And I know it was in May because my birthday was coming up. I knew it was only a week or two before my birthday. Okay, right. Yeah, so it would have been, yeah, mid-May 2020. Yeah, so not that long ago. No, no, like, it, it has stuck with me ever since. Like, it's something you don't forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know... Nearly absolute. Well, I'd say ninety nine point nine percent of the people I speak to, the one of the key things that stands out when they've seen these things is that gate, that weird locomotion. Yeah, well, like I said, that's what made me. That and the black made me look twice because I was like, "Hang on a minute, he's running weird. Like, what's wrong with that fox?" And then I realised, shit, he's got a huge head for a fox, and the and the and the stiff bolt out tail, like with the the um, kangaroo shape to it. Like, it it, it, it didn't look like a a fox tail. Like I've seen foxes, and they always got that nice bushy tail, and and usually a white tip. And no, it wasn't bushy. <laughs> and the tail was like a root tail, where it was solider and thicker at the base, and yep. sort of tapered off. Yep, yep, yep. And like I said, you know, like I grew up out west. I I shot roos all my life. I've um I used to be a kangaroo boner for seven years in different roo boxes out west. So I know a damn lot about what kangaroo bones look like and and how they move and operate and yeah like its tail just looks so much like a kangaroo it wasn't funny like it was just obvious yeah so it it was it wasn't a fox (laughs) you you can see why they call it the australian marsupial wolf then eh oh yeah yeah it's so and the big head like the the head was enormous like a lot of people don't realize with a dingo their head is the same width as their shoulders yeah yeah Wherever a dingo can put his head, his whole body can follow. Yep, Whereas, yep. Whereas, from what I could tell with these things, uh, that ain't the case. <laughs> well, these are jumpers. They can jump over fences. They don't need to go through them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just saying, like, for holes and crevices. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, a I, dingo, wherever he puts his head, he knows he can get through. Whereas, I, I doubt a thylacine would be able to do the same sort of <laughs> thing because their head's a lot bigger than their shoulders. Yeah, that's a really good observation, mate. Um the females are known to have a slightly narrower face and a narrow muzzle, but the the males are known to have a broader head. So um, that's really, really good info. Really do, good do info. Do they have their ball sack the same as a kangaroo? Because I didn't see any sexual organs because one reason I was too far away. But, um, yeah, I was, I was just curious that... The, are their balls in the same area as like a red roo, or are they? Different? Well, they are, but the the penis is actually behind the scrotum, and the scrotum has a pouch on the male to keep the the testes up, so they don't get oh. caught on things. So the males actually have a pouch for their testes. I never knew that. Yeah, That's so very interesting. Now the females, well, uh, k- kangaroos are the same, where the scrotum, where the scrotum's forward of the penis. Yep. Yeah, yep. I'm. I'm I'm aware of that with Ruse and that, yeah. So I, I didn't know they had a pouch. So, so it would be unlikely you would see testes on one then. Yeah, because they recess and go up when they're running through the scrub so they don't get hooked up, basically. Yeah, right. 
be- a genius design. <laughs> well, they're primarily a runner, but they can take off like a kangaroo and bounce. So it's almost like these things are caught in the middle of evolution and they're not yeah. quite sure where they fit. And, you know, that sort of explains the, the really weird gait and then the fact that they look like a dog, they act like a cat and they run like a horse. You yeah. Know? But they can hop like a root. Now, I noticed you said before that it galloped off. So is is that because you can recognise a gallop or that was just a bit of terminology? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looked like it was running more like a horse yep. than a, any other animal that you could think of, really. But he's, at first, when I first seen him, he, like that footage I was saying that you had from that lady in Victoria, he was sort of like having that, that bouncy little run it was doing and then it sort of progressed into a gallop. And at first, I thought he was running directly for the sheep, but then I seen him from, like, before he got completely out of view. He, he looked like he tapered off to the left because there was some scrub or even might even be a bit of a knobby hill over there with a bit of scrub on it. And it looked like he sort of beelined away from the sheep and curved back around towards back up towards that hill but at first i thought he was going for the sheep but the sheep knew he was there because they were they were mobbed up well before i come along and i was like this is really weird what i, I was straight away looking for a dingo or a pig yeah so i thought no but coming from out west myself like you you really ob- take good ob- observation of animals that are feral as well as ones that are domesticated because normally they'll give it up if there's a predator nearby. <laughs> yeah, and if you're a shooter, you've got to know what it is before you pull that trigger. Yeah, yeah, and and like I like I love um, nature and animals in general. Like, yeah, and I, I love observing animals in the wild. Like I used to get excited seeing eagles even, you know, along the highway. It's something to break up the boredom of the day and... You, you sit behind one of the wheel of them things long enough, you really start looking out the window. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, we used to do the Adelaide-Brisbane run, me and Dad. We used to take Chryslers up and then Mitsubishis when they took over, and then we'd bring Holdens back because they yeah, still right. made Geminis and Tiranas in Brisbane back in those days. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised that more people see them than you think but think it's a fox. Like, because... They, you know, a lot of people these days, the, the brainwashing our scientists and government do is renowned for its ability to change people's opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't you start know, me like on that I, cl- bunch of clowns. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. A lot of people have seen them and didn't even know they seen one. Just thought it was a fox, like you know. Yeah, we had we had three guys in Murray Bridge in South Australia about November last year. All saw one run through an oval, broad daylight. Now, there were security cameras at the Oval, so they rang up and said, oh, could you check the cameras? Could we have a look at it? You know, there was a really weird thing run through. So the, the people that ran the, the establishment, I won't say what it was, they, they got back to me and said, oh, yeah, we had a look. It was just a fox. Yeah. But the three people that saw it in broad daylight were adamant that it wasn't a fox. So what do you do, you know? And, and that's the trouble these days is, you know, if it doesn't suit the scientific narrative that they've got going, they just dis- dismiss it. And I, I, I've i also, like like I said, where I've come from out west there, like um, the Grey Range west of Blackall, it's, um, it shadows the Thompson, Barker Rivers and the Cooper River yep. down to the border. And up in the mountains there, it is very remote. Like there's a yellow-footed ring-tailed, a white ring-tailed wallaby out there that they made um, Idalia a national park for, for to protect this wallaby. Um, I know for a fact from opal mining and being on fence and plants throughout that entire grey range, they're endemic the whole way along there. Yeah. But scientists failed to recognise that. But um, uh, there's so much area in this country that has not been explored. Like, I found a, I found a gecko underneath a rock out there, right? It was... Perfect army coloured gecko had an army pattern to it, a waxy skin, a strange looking gecko. I've never seen one like it in a book or on the internet since. So I put it back underneath the rock and and put it back in its habitat. But I've seen a lot of interesting, just small animals out there that I've never seen in a book anywhere. Yeah, right. And, and they're quick to tell us, oh, everything's extinct. It's like the night parrot. Now they've discovered there's colonies of them in Queensland, Northern Territory, and Western Australia. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing. I mean, sometimes it's not entirely the scientists' fault because they're not funded no. to do much field That's research. Right. That's right. If or, you can't get out there, you're never going to know. 
That's right. And there, and there's three scientists to cover, you know, the entire western side of Queensland kind of thing, you know. That's right. But, that's right. It's like um, I think it was after one of the big wets there about 10 years ago in Western Australia. They went out there and they found a colony of butterflies that was extinct, a new breed of the western taipan, they were calling it, and a bunch of other species they didn't even know existed. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing, and you know, we've we've just um, recently had, you know, ten days ago, their big announcement that they've got five million dollars to try and clone a thylacine. You know, go figure. Yeah, and it's oh, it's bizarre. It is really bizarre. That five million dollars be better spent uh, looking for the thylacines that are out there. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's not rocket science. It shouldn't be rocket science. Um, we've got. You know, there's an organisation called um, AFRA, which is the Australian um, R Rare Fauna Research Association. Um, now, they they started off in the 1980s, and their founder collected over 7,000 sightings of thylacines, 5,000 on the mainland. Yeah. And yet well, they I, still I, declared I, it extinct, you know? Well, before I found... Um, the main reason I found your channel is on YouTube was because... I, after having my sighting, it's like, surely there's someone out there looking into this. Like, I wasn't expecting the government to. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's how I come across your, your awareness group. And I, I've been hooked ever since. Every time you just put up a, a new sighting, I, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> well, mate, <laughs> um, yeah, I've... you've seen one, it's hard, to, it's hard to tell you they're not there. <laughs> well, that's it. Seeing is believing. And, and when you've exactly. got when you've got literally hundreds of people very independently reporting seeing extremely similar, if not identical, things all across Australia, and then you have some turkey in a white coat that gets out of the, the office once a year for two weeks telling yeah. you, I know they're extinct because we have we haven't got one to cut up. You've got to be all wrong, you know? Like, yeah, nah. Common sense is not working for that individual, I'm afraid. Well, I, I, I call it rare sense. I don't believe that we, common sense can be called common anymore because it's not. <laughs> well, it's it's probably more endangered than the thylacine, to be honest. That's right. And um, also, too, like um, with these big cat sightings, like for ages I've, I've heard about these big cat sightings down south. I've never got to see one myself. But to be honest with you, I believe they are thyolea. I like, I know people say, yeah, some escaped here and there throughout the decades, but honestly, like, how have they all managed to meet up, find each other, breed, and keep a population going? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me, that, that line of thought, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not discrediting anyone, but, yeah, that line of thought doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I do believe that Thyaleo is probably still on the mainland as well. Yeah, Thylacaleo. Um, yeah, Thylacaleo, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I honestly do believe it is still around as well then because them big cat sightings like i know they do look a lot like um the panthers and that but I, like i'm right into aboriginal stories in particular like because i believe they have far more knowledge than the white man's ever learnt and, absolutely um, they like they often say that there were several species of these things and the biggest ones were black yeah <laughs> it's like well I'll take their word over a paid scientist any day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as far as Thylacoleo goes, I don't really go down that rabbit hole too much. People report them to me, um, and well, I share I, I share what I get, but there are thousands of sightings of them as well all over the, Australia. The only reason I've brought them up is I've heard of a story up in the Carnarvon Range here in Queensland. Now, this story, I'm like I've heard of third, fourth hand, so I'm not 100% sure how accurate it is. But the story goes there was a farmer or a drover up there like moving a mob of cattle through that area. And I'm not sure what time frame this happened. From what I understand, it could have been 60s or 70s. And the guy on was on horseback, and he reported seeing a big tan-coloured cat came out of the scrub and chased down a, um, like, I mean, a cow and tried to grab it. And he, he chased it off with a stock whip. So I don't know how true the story is, but I'd heard that story third, fourth hand that apparently this happened. It was somewhere in the 60s or 70s. Okay. But well, yeah, that was that was um, the Carnarvon range up here in Queensland. We had a story from South Australia 
um, this is only second hand, um, where a uh, farmer was on horseback in the 1970s in the southeast of South Australia and came across a bear type animal sitting in the middle of the track that didn't want to move. The horse was spooked and this thing was rather aggressive so he turned around and, and took off and it came chasing after the horse with him on it. It lunged at the horse, managed to stick its claws in its rear end and let go and they got away but it had the big fifth claw mark that sits at a right angle um yeah, stuck in the horse's rear end you know so there's really only one animal out there that can do that and it's meant to have been extinct for ten thousand years so you know these things well, still happen well it's like with the um oh, what's the um the animal that the um the bunyip, it's like with the bunyip. Now, scientists believe that that might have been one of these um, giant wombats that existed. Well, the stories of the bunyip went up right up until the late 1800s in Australia where white people claim they'd seen bunyips. Yeah, that's and right. The, so that there very well could have been some of those, you know, small pockets still surviving. I think it's highly likely there was a lot of megafauna remnants kicking around in Australia when colonisation took place. And they, yeah, were, I think, they were, I believe that too. <laughs> they were pretty swift to knock off anything that looked like it might eat them. Yeah, well, pretty much. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard many stories about the the giant guanas that lived here. I have, yeah. Yeah, like some of the stories I've heard of them of people being attacked by them and sightings right up into the fifties and sixties in New South Wales, in particular, in the forest forests there. It's I wouldn't discount anything. <laughs> May I, I've, honestly? <laughs> Hearing from people like yourself on an almost daily basis of late, um, it's it's pretty obvious that um, yeah. you don't discount anybody. Well, I, that's why I wanted to let you know about that sighting because I wasn't sure if there'd been many sightings in that area or not. Yeah. Like, now there has. Um, I've had a few actually in the last few years. We we yeah. had one a little bit further east towards Orange um, late last year. And yeah. then I've had two out near West Wylong in the last year as well that were reported to me. Um, then yeah. not far north of Gilgandra where the Bungle Bungles are um, yeah, and heading into the Pilliga, uh, you've got them as well out there. And then yeah. if you go east from there up into the ranges, um, you get them up in there too. There's sightings from up in there. Now, coming through the back of Dubbo, Oh, last year, I think it was, or the year before, I can't remember, I, I, I did a big trip, did about 10,000 k's, um, coming around the back of Dubbo from Newcastle, I think I came from, which is about a seven hour drive from Newcastle to Dubbo, um, anyway, I was coming through there, and the amount of roadkill was phenomenal, there was tons oh. of game up there, shit tons of game, predators right. would be having a field day. And this area near Tullamore, a lot of kangaroos in that area, wallabies, eastern gra uh, western greys, or I don't know, they might be eastern greys, I'm not sure what they call them, but there's tons of roos through there and roadkill, like it's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, and you know, all through western New South Wales, I mean, a lot of the flatlands cleared for grazing and, and crops and stuff, but those, you know, little mountainy rocky outcrops, they're covered in bush, they're, they're you That's know, right. all that native pine country out there, it's a beautiful part of the world, I love driving through there. Well, like I said, when you look at this, when I send it to you, this uh, pin drop on the map, yep. um, just to the north of it, back up into there, there is a lot of, um, like, little knobby hills, like, you know, they're covered in granite and, and f thick foliage. Like, it's just perfect. If you wanted a den or a cave somewhere to hide, like, there's a lot of areas there that would be ideal for it. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, there's, there's always these little critters out there that they reckon aren't aren't you know there anymore that seem to pop up every now and then they found they found one west of broken hill uh or no not west of broken it might have been east of broken hill in some ranges out there about two years ago that has been extinct in new south wales for over 100 years well suddenly they had some money to go looking for it and bang there it was so yeah you know these things happen um oh, I'm sorry I'm, I'm looking at it here now on the google maps yeah it's to the west of and to the south of where i sighted it there's like a um it must be like a forest or national park or something there. Yep. And there's like literally hundreds, if not thousands. Yeah, it would be thousands of acres of uh, 
of Man, natural like, country. Like yeah, yeah. There's the scrubby and like um yeah, all the little knobby hills and that like it. it yeah, I, I was just so taken back by it. Like straight away, I rang my mate, and then as soon as I got back in reception, I rang him and I rang my wife straight away to tell her. Like you know, I have seen one for real. Like it, it was just what what threw me at first. Why I didn't think straight away it was a thylacine was the color. Like I didn't know they come in other colors. I had no idea. Yeah, well, if you have a look at the um, <laughs> there's there's an online museum called Natural Worlds, the online museum for thylacines, and they've got some really good photos of a lot of the different coloured pelts from the museums, and there's a big variety. I mean, we yeah. get sightings of ones without stripes. The Aboriginal people talk of ones that were all black with no stripes. Yep. There were sightings on the Nullarbor in the 60s of black ones with white stripes. I mean... Yeah, I remember hearing that in one of your, um, on, on YouTube, on one of your clips about that. I was quite taken back by that. Like, yeah, hey, that's... Well, really you know, we, <laughs> you, I've, I've been argued down by a lot of sceptics over the years, but if... Take possums, for example. How many variations are there within the possum family, you know? Oh, that's right, especially in colour. Like, yeah. There's so many different colours. Someone sent me a photo from South Australia the other day of an all-black ring-tailed possum. Now, I've never seen an all-black one. I've seen them with, <sighs> you know, different variations, but not one that was all-black, but that was in South Australia, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. Like, But I suppose, like, it's the same as um, most creatures. Like, I've, I've caught yellow belly every colour imaginable. Like, just about, like, yeah, yeah. And it's still a yellow belly. You can tell it's definitely a yellow belly, but it's um, yeah. Yeah, some of them are more almost. Genetics. Yeah, or some of them are almost a golden green colour, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, out west, like I've had um, this is where scientists just don't understand what they're talking about. I've I've, I've had people tell me right when the water goes clear out west with the gum trees, every, everything goes black to hide, right? Well, I've fished in a waterhole out west where I've pulled out a perfect golden yellow belly, looked the same as any yellow belly down here in coloration, beautiful gold belly and green back. Yep. Then pull out the very next fish, and it is jet black with a white belly. Yep. Still a yellow belly, identical in bone structure. It is definitely a yellow belly, and the black brim out there, they're silver, they're not black. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And, um, and I've pulled them out where the black was more of a bluish hue to the black. Than rather being jet black. All out of and the same waterhole. Out of the same waterhole, same conditions, and they say, oh, no, it's it's the water changes, so they change, and, oh, that fish couldn't have been there long. Well, the river hadn't run for uh, over 12 months due to a drought, so <laughs> that dispels that myth. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I believe it's genetics. Like, I, I remember when I was a kid, they, I remember hearing about it there on a radio station one day. They were talking about there was 36 different genetic variants of yellow belly in the Cooper. And people say, how does that happen? Well, when some of these fish go up in all these tributaries, they could be stuck there for 10 years if the river doesn't run. Well, yep. it's going to change their genetics, isn't it? Like, <laughs> And then they finally breed and the, and the fry and the eggs go downstream and all of a sudden you get all this variety. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, like, if there's at least 36 different species of yellow belly in the, in the Cooper alone, imagine how many different genetic off offshoots there'd be within the thylacine, especially if there's, like... Um, you know, populations have been separated for so long. Yeah. Like, it would make sense that colours probably would be different, I suppose, and stuff like that. Absolutely, mate. And and you see the same thing within dingoes. There's about eight, ten different kinds of dingo colours out there as well. You've got alpine and dingoes, got all black yeah, dingoes. Right. They've only been in Australia for 10,000 years or so. So, you know, what what what? who's to say that things can't evolve over a short period of time? to their climatic and geographic conditions, you know? Well, it's, speaking of freaky things, I come across an um, eagle one day near um, Moree, on the western side of Moree, coming in from the Burke Way. Yep. And it was the weirdest eagle I've ever seen. I was on the phone to the same mate that I told about seeing the thylacine, and this is like a year later, and I said to him, hang on a minute, this eagle doesn't look right. And he goes, what do you mean? And there was a dead red kangaroo in the middle of the road, and this eagle was sitting on it, and he was oh, about the size of an average wedge tail. He had grey wings and a white chest, and the head was grey. And it's like, I've never seen an eagle like that. <laughs> it wasn't a sea like, eagle. Well, that's what I said to my mate. Could it be a sea eagle? Like, how far inland do they come? <laughs> well, you know, how, how long's a piece of string? Yeah, yeah, because 
and that's what we put it down to. We put it down to it had to be a sea eagle, otherwise it was uh, a rare, weird-looking wedge tail. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, mate, where I was would have been a good what five hundred kilometres from the coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least from Moree. Yeah. Christ, that's a long way from well, the coast. This, well, this would have been a good oh, this would have been a good hundred k nearly the other side of Moree, west of Moree. <laughs> out in that Channel Country. <laughs> yeah, right, way out there, and it's like, what the freaking hell is this bird? And he he took off the carcass. I like, waited until I got real close, and when he took off. He'd done a big, uh, big circle, come straight back around and landed, and I was still looking at it in the mirror while I'm talking to my mate on the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, if it is a sea eagle, geez, he's travelled a long way to get some protein. <laughs> yeah, look, n- never say never, mate. That's what I say. Yeah. Never say never. And, and that, that's that's why uh, I've um, I've had some weird sightings of animals over the years. Like I, I had one out west on a river. I didn't get to see it clearly due to the brush of the tree it was in on a river. But when I told my father about it, he believed me because he'd seen one similar. It looked like a plain turkey, but it wasn't. had a different head to a plain turkey and had the same colours as a plain turkey. And it and it flew off and it was the size of an eagle. I don't know what the hell it was. <laughs> but I, I didn't get a good look at it before I spooked it and it flew away. And I told my father about it and he said, I've seen a similar bird and he only ever seen it once too. Yeah, so, right. Don't even know what that was. I didn't get a good enough look to see what it was. Yeah, okay. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't doubt any animal that they deem extinct to be still around, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, well, look, we're rediscovering extinct species every year. There's five or six that go back on the list as endangered. I mean, That's right. you know, the Tasmanian government, in their wisdom, down at the Hobart Museum, they've got this little plaque there at the thylacine ex- exhibit that says they consider it to be functionally extinct. Well, there's no yeah, such right. no such thing as functional extinction. It's called critically endangered. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So you're admitting it's still alive. <laughs> well, it, they, they don't want to admit it's still there because then they might have to be compelled to do something about the way they manage this place. But anyway, that's yeah, another yeah. another rabbit hole. Yeah, and I, and I agree with that too. That's why a lot of these narratives stick and they try the hardest to keep that narrative going is yeah that we, involves that we there spend has to be conservation efforts <laughs> that's right mate we spend way more money destroying the environment than we do protecting it unfortunately but that's the oh, nature mate, of the yeah. beast well, listen yeah, it's, it's, chris um i've got to cut you off mate because i've got a lot to do i'm out collecting yeah. cameras today um i had the recorder going before you rang is it okay if i use this interview as one of our podcasts uh, yeah, that'd be fine. Just um, um, probably cut my name off it, yeah. <laughs> if that's all right. Yeah, I, I can do that. I can uh, edit out your name. That's easily enough. Yeah, yeah, the, re- the rest I'm okay with. Yeah. All right, I'll just call you Joe Bloggs or something like that. That'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone right. who knows me will know my voice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, no worries. Well, look, thank you very much for your information, and by all means, if you find anything unusual, send us through a text or a photo or whatever, and we'll go from there. But have a look at our website um, and, you know, check out that Natural Worlds Online Thylacine Museum. It's well worth a look. Yeah, and um, also, too, like I've recently bought a bow and I'm looking at getting into bow hunting for deer up in the mountains here and... Yeah, I'll be definitely keeping an eye out for tracks and, and all sorts of things like that. Absolutely. Good work. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, Thank mate. You, Neil. Good on you, buddy. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.